Apophis, an asteroid that may strike Earth in 2029. There are thousands of asteroids in the solar system that orbit very close to the Earth, known as NEOs, near-Earth objects, and one in particular that has raised concern in the scientific community in recent years due to a high probability of colliding with Earth. This is the asteroid Apophis. Is this asteroid still on course to collide with Earth? And if so, when will the impact occur? Come find out with us. Hello and welcome to Z. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to get our daily videos. NEOs Near-Earth objects or NEOs are space objects, such as asteroids or comets, whose orbits around the Sun bring them dangerously close to Earth. But what exactly do we mean by close? When astronomers find a NEO, one of the most difficult challenges is convincing society that while the object will pass close to Earth, it will not collide with our planet. When an astronomer says close, he indicates that an asteroid is less than 1.3 astronomical units from Earth. One astronomical unit equals 93 million miles or 150 million kilometers. This means that when an astronomer says an asteroid will travel close to Earth, he means it will pass within 150 million kilometers of our planet, roughly the distance between Earth and the Sun. As you can see, we're talking about tremendous distances, so just because an object is classed as NEO doesn't mean it's likely to collide with the Earth, it merely means you should keep an eye on it. There are already over 30,000 recorded NEOs, and today we will discuss one of them, the asteroid Apophis, a massive rock that, when discovered, was predicted to collide with Earth. It all began on Jupiter. Comet shoemaker Levy 9 collided with Jupiter in July 1994, marking the first occasion in human history that scientists and astronomers could directly see a space object's impact on a planet in real time. The impact of Comet shoemaker Levy 9 was a once-in-a-lifetime astronomical event that had a tremendous impact on research and public awareness of the study of near-Earth objects or NEOs. shoemaker Levy 9, also known as SL9, was a periodic comet that broke up into several fragments during a near flyby of Jupiter in 1992 due to the tidal effects of Jupiter's enormous gravitational field. Two years later, these debris coalesced into a sequence of cometary nuclei on their way to a catastrophic collision with Jupiter in July 1994. Over several weeks, the impact of the SL9 fragments on Jupiter's surface produced tremendous changes to the planet. It is even estimated that the collision affected the hue of the planet slightly. It was the first time the human race observed firsthand the devastation caused by meteorite impacts on a planet. But what does this have to do with the comet Apophis? The reason for this is that before to the impact of comet SL9 on Jupiter, humanity and even the scientific community were uninterested in studying the effects of asteroids and comets on the planets. It was expected to happen only once per few million years. Years had passed and there was nothing to be concerned about. This incident, however, altered everything. We now know that these occurrences are continuously occurring in our solar system and that the Earth could suffer the same fate at any time. This sparked widespread worry in the scientific community and the U.S. government, prompting the funding of large-scale efforts to locate any objects that potentially represent a hazard to Earth. As a result, NASA and other organizations increased their near-Earth object watching programs and set lofty targets for identifying and tracking the vast majority of NEOs in the solar system. This included a target of identifying 90% of NEOs larger than 1 kilometer in diameter by 2008, ushering in a new era of increased awareness and preparedness for impact risk mitigation, as well as funding for NEO-focused scientific research projects and the construction of astronomical telescopes and observatories to search for asteroids and comets with close orbits to Earth. The Kitt Peak National Astronomical Observatory was one such observatory. Peak, abbreviated KPNO, is 2,096 meters above sea level and is located in the Arizona desert in the United States. The Apophis asteroid would be discovered by this observatory. Apophis, the bringer of destruction. 
Many observatories throughout the world joined the search once the desperate race to detect objects that could harm Earth began. Objects on collision paths with the Earth were discovered on occasion. Nonetheless, after the relevant calculations were completed, they were promptly eliminated because they did not pose a threat to our planet. However, on June 19, 2004, during a routine observation session, researchers Roy A. Tucker, David J. Thalen, and Fabrizio Bernardi detected a small bright spot in the telescope images. This was not a new discovery. They had previously discovered asteroids using the same technique. To identify asteroids, simply take numerous photographs of the sky every second with the background of stars, and if you discover a point that moves significantly quicker than the stars, take several more images. You should pause, pay attention, and consider what it is about. This is what the scientists did. They examined the photos based on light intensity and object trajectory indications. They were able to establish its size as a result of this, but after completing orbital calculations to predict its route, they uncovered something that left them speechless. The orbit of this object, which had a diameter of more than 300 meters, predicted that it would collide with Earth on April 13, 2029. While this asteroid was not as massive as the one that killed the dinosaurs, it was large enough to easily obliterate an entire continent. The threat was genuine. The researchers couldn't believe it, so they did what any scientist would do. They attempted to debunk their discovery. To accomplish this, they relayed the asteroid's coordinates and photos to all accessible observatories, allowing them to examine it and confirm the collision calculations with the Earth. This proved to be the most difficult portion since, as a small body, it was difficult to observe. In fact, KPNO investigators only managed to observe it for two nights before losing sight of it. Everything showed that the impact was impending based on the images they had obtained throughout those two nights. The name 99942 was given at first, but once it was determined that the likelihood of a collision with our planet was high, the scientists who discovered it decided to call him Apophis. Many people believe that scientists gave it this name because Apophis is the name of the Egyptian deity of destruction. After only two nights of observation, the discovery of Apophis began to make headlines and everyone began to talk about it. Still, a few months later, on December 18th of the same year, astronomer Gordon Garrett noticed it again at Australia's observatory and it was soon seen from various observatories across the world. The asteroid Apophis was on everyone's radar since it was the first object with a real chance of impacting with Earth, but is Apophis still on a collision course with Earth today? The most deadly of any asteroid. Apophis has been seen by dozens of observatories and telescopes throughout the world since its discovery in 2004, and even space telescopes have provided new information about its journey. The next closest approach date, according to orbital computation algorithms developed by hundreds of scientists, will be April 13, 2029. Experts estimate that if Apophis collides with Earth, it will do so somewhere between the Kamchatka Peninsula, Russia, and the Venezuelan region. The likelihood of impact was then determined. To astronomers' amazement, subsequent observations from telescopes around the world raised the impact probability rather than decreasing it, reaching as high as 2.7%, 1 in 37, in the first few days after its discovery. This very high impact probability, paired with the asteroid size, about 300 meters, earned Apophis a level 4 on the Turin scale. This is the greatest value ever attained by an asteroid. The Turing scale is a way for categorizing the risk involved with near-Earth object impacts. It is measured on a scale of 0 to 10, with 0 representing no or almost no probability of impact, 1 representing a moderate probability of impact, 2 to 4 representing a high probability of impact or a close encounter like Apophis, 5 to 7 representing a severe threat to the Earth and measures should be planned in case the impact occurs and 8 to 10 representing a 100% safe impact. 
In this case, 8 indicates that the impact will cause local damage within a thousand kilometers, 9 indicates that the impact will cause regional damage, that is the asteroid could destroy a large country or several small countries, and 10 indicates that the impact will cause a global climate catastrophe that will threaten all life on Earth or even cause the extinction of all species. What is Apophis' current position on the Turing scale? Apophis was discovered in photographs before its discovery date on December 27, 2004, and its orbit may be fine-tuned, minimizing the chance of a collision by 2029 and lowering its threat category 4 to level 0. So don't be concerned, you may rest easy tonight. For the time being, Apophis will not collide with the Earth. During subsequent observations, some astronomers calculated that, during the 2029 close encounter with Earth, Apophis may have passed through a gravitational lock, a precise region of space no more than 400 m in diameter around the Earth, putting it on a collision course for future impact on April 13, 2036. However, fresh orbital calculations show that the likelihood of an impact is equally low, ruling out a collision in 2036 and 2068, when the asteroid would pass near to Earth again. In short, Apophis is unlikely to strike Earth this century. But we must be cautious because hundreds of thousands of NEOs have yet to be detected. Could it be that one of these days, let's find one with a Turing danger level of 8 to 10? In that situation, it's best to find it as soon as possible. But why? Because the sooner we detect it, the more time we have to detour it and avoid it from colliding with our beautiful planet. But how could we deflect an asteroid that was going straight for Earth? That's something we'll cover in a later video. Do you want us to make a video about how to deflect asteroids? Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching and please let us know if you liked or disliked the video so that we can make it better for you. Also don't forget to subscribe to our channel by pressing the notification bell to ensure you don't miss any of our daily videos.